Hello and welcome to I-24 News Sports Daily Magazine with all the latest scores and stories from around the world. And we have plenty of action coming your way. Real Madrid may be the team dominating world football, but are they dominating their own city? Is Leo Messi becoming bigger than the club itself in Barcelona? And the leading tennis players are all in Australia where there's time to play, but also time for fun. All this and much more coming up. Let's get started. The terrible terror attack on the headquarters of French magazine Charlie Hebdo reminded us all once again how fragile is the reality we live in. Global sports have not been immune to this reality with terrorists targeting major sporting events. Lise Barenboim and Daniel Ziri look back at some of those incidents that shocked the world of sports. of sport has felt the wrath of terrorism time and time again. Although organizations make many preparations to prevent any possible attack, we have witnessed horror several times in history. The most recent tragedy was the Boston Marathon in 2013. Two bombs which went off just 70 meters from the finish line left three people dead and 264 injured. A horrific memory for many Americans. You have become the face of America's resolve, not unlike what happened in 9-11. You've become the face of Americans' resolve for the whole world to see. The terrorists were two brothers, Jokar and Tamerlan Tsarayev. Tamerlan was killed by police while on the run, and Jokar is currently on trial. The 21-year-old American of Chechenian background may face the death penalty if convicted. But just a year after the tragedy, the people of Boston have shown their bravery was unique about this event was that, you know, Boston has a lot of pride and um, they were able to really rally together and, and heal together from this event. And I think that we wouldn't have it any other way. But the most famous terrorist attack in the history of sport took place at the Munich Olympics. On September 5, 1972, eight members of the Black September Palestinian terrorist organization entered the Olympic Village. Eleven members of the Olympic team were taken hostage and the terrorists demanded the release of 234 Palestinian prisoners. Five of the terrorists were killed, three others arrested. Over 40 years later, the memory of the massacre still stings Israeli sports. I did not go home in the middle of the Olympics. I was sitting in the plane that also carried the coffins of my coach and my countrymen. They returned home in coffins. I could not understand what was happening. I thought, but what's going on? 24 years later, a bomb exploded in the heart of the Centennial Park during another Olympic Games in Atlanta. The attack left two dead and 111 injured. The man responsible was Eric Rudolph, an extreme Christian activist. He was finally caught six years later and sentenced to life in prison. The Winter Olympic Games in Sochi last year were preceded by two suicide bombings in December 2013 in Volgograd, Russia. 30 people were killed and dozens were injured in these attacks by Islamists a few months before the Games. We know that the Russian authorities want to host the Olympic Games on the bones of many Muslims buried on our land along the Black Sea. We must prevent it by all means. The world of sport is constantly perfecting security measures for major international events, but often they are not enough to prevent tears from being shed around the world. Now on to much happier notes and we move to Spain for the Clásico Madrileño. Any Madrid derby is a huge event. When it happens as early as the round of 16 in the Copa del Rey, it's even bigger. When one team is the European champion and the other is the Spanish champion, it's a huge event. The first leg took place last night at the Vicente Calderón. Cristiano Ronaldo does not seem very happy to stay on the Real Madrid bench. Fernando Torres, on the other hand, was on the starting 11 for Atletico. No goals in the first half, but after the break, Sergio Ramos brings Raul Garcia down in the area. Garcia himself takes the penalty and puts the home team up front. The one thing Atletico specializes in is goals coming from headers. Well, there's one more now. 14 minutes from time, Jose Jimenez does it, and Atletico will take a precious 2-0 lead to the second leg next week at the Santiago Bernabeu. Three more matches were held last night in the Spanish Cup. Villarreal beat Real Sociedad 1-0. 
Valencia beat Espanyol 2-1 at the Mestalla, and the match between Almeria and Getafe ended in a 1-0 draw. On Tuesday, Athletic Bilbao made a big step towards the quarterfinal when they won 4-2 in Vigo, and Malaga beat Levante 2-0 at home. Two more matches are scheduled for tonight. Barcelona hosts Elche at the Camp Nou, and Seville makes the trip to Granada. The match against Elche tonight will be much more than just a regular cup game for Luis Enrique. Sources in Barcelona claim the manager got into a serious conflict with Leo Messi, with reports of both men placing an ultimatum to the club, basically saying it's him or me. The question is, does the manager stand any chance against the man who is seen not only as the biggest star on the pitch, but also the one calling the shots behind the scenes? Michael Friedman gives us a closer look at the turbulent days at the club from Catalonia. The new year kicked off and the Spanish giant Barcelona have not gotten off on the right foot. With the surprising loss to Real Sociedad, the firing of sporting director Andoni Zubizarreta, the departure of Carlos Puyol, and issues regarding Messi, many wonder what is happening on the inside at Camp Nou. Zubizarreta has been a Barca legend since his days as a goalkeeper between 1986 and 1994, as well as his success as football director since 2010. This comes just a week after the club lost its appeal against the one-year transfer ban. The president of Barcelona, Josep Maria Bartomeu, admires the former football director, but knows it's part of the game. I have great respect for Zubizarreta and have an important appreciation for him. He's an honest person and capable, and he has done things well. But upon losing our trust, the implication is there to change, and that is it. Others may see it differently, that's Barca. The unrest within upset many around, including another Barca hero, Carlos Puyol, who stood as Zubizarreta's assistant. The player found it challenging to stand on the other side of the pitch and is now looking for a new direction. Luis Enrique, the manager of Barcelona, is also very disappointed to see Zubizarreta go. First of all, for me it's sad news. Not only because they are the people that brought me to the club after being able to work my last year in the youth team. Lionel Messi has made the football world speculate on his possible departure after following Chelsea's Instagram page. There have been reports that the Argentinian star is unhappy with his life at Barca since the appointment of Luis Enrique. After being dropped for the previous match against Real Sociedad, Messi skipped training, something which upset the manager. What is true is that there are a series of common rules that apply to everybody and they should be respected. The group always is more important than any individual. That is one of the principles I believe in. While the media believe there are many problems within the club, the president of Barcelona denies that. I don't know nothing about those rumors. Simply, I, you are telling me this is uh, answer now, but I, I, don't, I don't know what at all. The recent instability has been heard around La Liga, and rival managers are being asked on their thoughts. No, you know me, I only I think about my team and the problems we're going through, and I'm not focused on what's going on with Barcelona. All I'm saying is every team goes through some issues at a certain point of the season. It's very difficult to have an opinion from the outside. I don't usually give my opinion based on what I'm told or on what I read because it's probably not real or not exactly as it's happening. So let's leave them to solve their issues the best way they can. As the Blagrano troubles continue, who will be the one to come inside and bring new positivity to this historical club? So Barcelona faces Elche in the cup tonight and Atletico Madrid this weekend in La Liga. Anything but two wins for the Blaugrana and pressure on Luis Enrique will get even bigger. Now, after days of speculations, now it's official. Steven Gerrard confirmed his move to the LA Galaxy at the end of the season. Many people are already eager to see him in the City of Angels, not only from the world of football. What can I say, man? Welcome to Los Angeles. Welcome to La La Land. And... Uh... Hopefully that means bringing another championship to the Galaxy. I'm sure it will. Um, I'm looking forward to getting down there and watching you do your thing. I've been a fan of yours for a very, very long time and your versatility and your aggressiveness and your leadership. So uh, welcome to Los Angeles, man, and enjoy and uh, kick some ass in the process. And I'll be down there rooting you on, my man. Peace. Maybe Kobe wants to see Gerard in LA to forget the miserable season the Lakers are going through. Kobe scored just four points in the loss of city rivals Clippers last night. 
It's been tough for the Cavaliers as well, who lost their fourth game in a row last night, this time at home to Houston. And again, they had to deal without LeBron James, who already six miss, missed six games due to injury. And even when he was on the court earlier in the season, he was playing through pain. I haven't felt great all year. Um, um, I've had spurts where one or two games I feel good. And, um, you know, after that, I was just pushing through it. I'm um, just being a competitive guy. I want, you know, I am and, and want to be out there for my teammates. So, um, you know, I feel I feel better right now um, than I've done for the majority of the season. LeBron and Kobe Bryant, along with many other American sports figures, grieved the loss of a legend this week, Stuart Scott was not a professional athlete, but he was the man who revolutionized the way American TV looked at sports. The story and more in this week's Press Review. This week, we lost a legend, a man who revolutionized the sports world. American sportscaster Stuart Scott died on Sunday after battling cancer. He was just 49 years old. The man touched millions of viewers with his charm and famous sayings such as booyah. As the news of his death spread, the Twitter world erupted with love for Scott. President Barack Obama said, I will miss Stuart Scott. Over the years, he entertained us, and in the end, he inspired us with courage and love. Basketball star LeBron James said, can't believe you're gone from us. I'm deeply saddened. Golfer Tiger Woods tweeted, Stuart wasn't covering heroes and champions. It was the other way around, thinking of my friend and his daughters. I can only say from one sports lover to another, you will be missed greatly. And on a lighter note, we move to English football. The Independent reported Arsene Wenger beaten once again by his oldest enemy, his coat zipper. While Puma said they fixed the manager's jacket problems, it appeared no one can make a coat that works for the Frenchman. Puma will have to go back to the drawing board. And next, we go to Paul Pogba, who's showing off his moves. The Italian club Juventus regularly challenges its fans on social media, and this time, it's with their star striker. Check out him as he parks on Pog Dance. And we finish with USA Today's headlines, which read, Bulls mascot comes to the rescue after a couple has argument on Kiss Cam. The video of the two Celtic fans on the camera has gone viral. With the spotlight on the couple, the guy couldn't be bothered to get off the phone. But fortunately for the girl, Benny the Bull swept in and got a standing ovation as he carried the girl away. All of the fans of the arena sure seemed happy to witness the heroic mascot save the day. And that's all for this week's Press Review. Way to go, mascot. Now to Olympic news and the 2022 Winter Games are seven years away, which means the candidate city will be chosen soon. Both candidate cities, Beijing and Almaty, presented their bids to the International Olympic Committee. Both will be reviewed by the IOC, with a decision being expected on July the 31st. We move to tennis now where all the big names are already down under in preparation for the Australian Open. And it's not all about playing and training. Some of them also find the time to have some fun. Roger Federer took a trip to see Dolphins on the coast of Queensland just ahead of his first match at the Brisbane Open. Federer was welcomed in a luxury resort and took time to feed wild dolphins which came close to the beach. Federer took the family, his wife and four kids to Australia, but that does not mean he's not concentrating on his work with the biggest aim, something which has eluded him last year, win another Grand Slam. I'd love to win the Australian Open, you know, no doubt it would get me really close to world number one, plus I would win another Grand Slam, you know, so that right now, clearly if that wouldn't be possible, then probably I would dream of winning Wimbledon once more. Uh, but I want to stay healthy and play good tennis and enjoy myself, which I, I really did last year. And Roger Federer is not the only one enjoying Australia's nature. Maria Sharapova also took some time off to enjoy some Australian wildlife. The world number two was given the opportunity to hold a koala bear. Looks like a lot of fun. Maybe the koala may have also given her a tip or two. 
After meeting the adorable animal, she beat Carla Suarez Navarro in the quarterfinals in Brisbane. Now that we know that Kofi is a secret for Serena Williams, maybe we found out Sharapova's secret as well. And we'll end our show with a very interesting question. What happens to all those Christmas trees once Christmas is gone? Maybe this is the answer they're used for the annual Christmas throwing competition. It's a local tradition in the town of Windenthal in southern Germany. To locals, it's known as Knutfest. The aim, of course, is to throw it as far as possible. After the competition had finished, the Christmas trees were burned in a bonfire to keep the jovial locals nice and warm on the cold winter evenings. And that's it for us today. Don't forget, you can watch this and every other show on our website at i24news.tv. We're also on Facebook and on Twitter. Thank you for watching and have a beautiful day.